Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellency Dr. Rania al-Mashat, Your Excellency Dr. Yasmin Fouad, distinguished guests, development partners, uh, representatives from the bilaterals, and all the friends of Egypt. Welcome this afternoon. We have just spent the last three days in each other's company, and we're almost reaching the end of what I believe has been an extremely interesting and productive forum. So without further ado, I would like to call on Dr. Rania Al-Mashat, Minister of International Cooperation, to give us her opening remarks. Thank you very much, uh, Dina, and uh, welcome uh, uh, all our guests and partners, uh, friends and family now since the three days uh, that we've been in each other's company. Uh, um, we're gathered for the second round table uh, on uh, the nexus of water, food and energy, Egypt's country platform for the Nuefi program. Um, and I think uh, the most famous word in the climate world today is Nuefi. Uh, I think uh, uh, that in itself is a, is a, big, is a big success. Um, as we mentioned uh, during uh, the first round table, uh, Egypt uh, wants to set uh, a country example uh, that could be replicated, an example where uh, climate is intertwined in the development goals uh, of the country. Uh, it's a country-owned program. Uh, this COP is from pledges to implementation, and therefore, here we are providing the demand side because we know there are so many pledges uh, on the supply side. Something else extremely uh, important in the Egyptian context, uh, our relationship with the international community through all the uh, development institutions, uh, the financial uh, institutions is a very strong one and with the bilateral friends as well. Uh, we want to leverage on these partnerships uh, in order to push climate action uh, to be able uh, to achieve not just our national goals, but also contribute uh, to the global goals, be it development goals or climate goals as well. Um, during the first round table, we had uh, the energy pillar uh, in focus. Uh, we had uh, our um, uh, very uh, good uh, friend, senior minister, uh, Dr. Mohammed Shekir, uh, give us details about the government's plans when it comes uh, to the first pillar of Nuefi, the energy pillar. Um, and uh, as we described uh, during the first round table, each pillar has an institution uh, that is uh, catalyzing the work uh, around the pillar. Today, uh, we have the two pillars uh, in Nuefi, food and water, uh, and we're very happy that like in the energy a pillar we have EBRD, uh, the catalytic uh, uh, institution on that pillar we have with us today on water, the African Development Bank. And we want to thank uh, uh, VP Kevin and the institution and all uh, our colleagues uh, that are going to be looking into this very, very important uh, 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 pillar. And uh, of course, yesterday we also had the occasion of launching Egypt's uh, country strategy for the next five years with the African Development Bank. The African Development Bank has played a very big role in sustainable infrastructure projects in Egypt. And uh, maybe those who attended the opening, uh, you would have seen the movie on uh, uh, Al Gabal Al Asfar uh, project, which uh, at that time was one of the biggest uh, wastewater treatment plants uh, in the country. And uh, in addition to uh, the uh, African Development Bank, we have other partners and we have split that uh, between technical assistance uh, and financial support. The other pillar is on food security. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, when we say that uh, all our strategies and all the work that is happening uh, is basically for a power, uh, for a people powered economy. Uh, and our key partner there is IFAD. IFAD has done fantastic work in Egypt across different governorates. Uh, 
work that uh, is actually uh, affecting uh, uh, communities. Uh, if you go to Matruh, if you go to Upper Egypt, you find very, very impressive projects, and they all have fantastic names. Sale, Pride, Prime, and the list can go on. We want to thank IFAD, Dina particularly, for the leadership on these projects. So IFAD is leading on uh, the uh, food uh, pillar within the WEFI. Uh, also, we have other institutions that uh, will be highlighted as well. Uh, the whole concept of the platform uh, is to be able to provide the technical support that we have all been uh, discussing over the different panels. I think this was one of the key messages uh, to, be, to make the, pro the, the project investable or bankable, be it through debt or through equity or through uh, innovative uh, financing tools. Uh, technical support is much needed to structure the project, to take a look at them in, in deep detail. And then there's the grant component uh, to be able to catalyze uh, uh, more financing. There's a concessional uh, lending that the government uh, will bear. Uh, and then, of course, the whole concept is that the implementation is not just through the sovereign, but also uh, through private sector engagement uh, with the objective of creating jobs and increasing the potential of the economy. So uh, today we are gathered. We will hear from the African Development Bank. We will hear from IFAD. Uh, we will see the steps going forward. We also have representation uh, from important institutions such as DFC uh, and, and others that actually provide uh, 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 financing to uh, the private sector in different forms. Um, so thank you very much for this support uh, and we look forward to engaging uh, on food security and water security uh, and hearing uh, more from uh, both institutions. Thank you very much. Excellency Dr. Rania, and as you said, Nawafi has become the household name, <laughs> even for the Arabic speakers. So, thank you. Now, um, I'd also have the pleasure to call Dr. Yasmin Fouad, Her Excellency the Minister of Environment, also to give us her welcome remarks. As uh, my dear colleague and friend, Rania mentioned, uh, dear colleagues and friends, and we will keep friends hand in hand for the next 58 days to go until we reach together Sharm el-Sheikh. In fact, the reason uh, I wanted really to speak on that specific session, because I felt that there are so much of important messages that I would like to give to the floor today. I know that the respectable panel will be discussing the details of the part related to the food and water. But those messages would be very important in the way we structure the financing of the water and the food. First of all, as Egypt is 
as an incoming presidency for COP27 realizes very much the importance of adaptation and reads very well the latest IPCC report that indicated that we have around 3.5 billion people already lives in area which are highly vulnerable to the impact of climate change. Relating that to the 1.5 and how the window is closing very rapidly. From that perspective, and moving from our strategy to our MDC to our priority projects, we felt we should not be alone in that path. It's not the idea of presenting only our national priority uh, through a national platform and through a national led initiative also as NUAFI, but also give some sense when we're talking about COP27, a COP for implementation. From that perspective, Egypt presidency and the government of Egypt when wanted to give solutions to climate change, we wanted to have that COP with three main descriptions, integrated, inclusive, and human-centric COP. How can we do that? How can we transfer those words into actions on the ground? And this is where the nexus for the energy, food, and water would come into life. And it will only come into life by us as all, by our all contribution, integrated by thinking more of a holistic approach for climate mitigation and adaptation, inclusive, where everyone would have a chair around the table, the program meets the appetite of different institutions, and human-centric, because it serves at the very deep, the basic, needs of humanity and in doing so it will save the basic needs for the Egyptian citizens. As you all know that the recent IPCC report has always indicated that Egypt is one of the most vulnerable countries to the impact of climate change and Nile Delta is one of the three deltas that will be affected heavily by the impact of climate change. Not only that, but when we talk also about the extreme weather events, the drought, and how that will affect drastically the crop production, and how can that be avoided. Even when we're talking about the Nile Delta, we would still have that part related to the erosion with huge consequences on the agriculture. And we have already started to see, as related to food security, as a country who relies on the food imports, the big impact on that among our different seasons. And from that perspective, we see and we feel every single day that climate change is jeopardizing the development efforts of the country. And in doing so, this is replicated and upscaled along the region. Along the region first in Africa and along other developing countries. It's the same story that is being repeated each and every single day. But the extreme weather event could be different from one to the other. But what does it bring at the end? It brings us to the road where the development process and all the gains that's being there will cost much more to reverse if we can only reverse back the clock. In some cases, that's not easy to be done. Also, one part that we would like to deliver to our dear development partners, you've invested a lot and you showed so many success stories. Rania has just mentioned some of those success stories in the production, in the agricultural sector. But those stories could be replicated and upscaled for the sake of the farmers. 
the game changer in the Nuafi could seem to be the energy upon which we're relying for the food and water. But believe it or not, the game changer in the Nuafi is the water, is how to make sure that there is the availability of water, but also the access of water for both drinking water, for agriculture, for life as a whole in Egypt. And this is in itself cannot be at the back of the seat. We cannot leave that at the back of the seat. We've done our effort, we've been investing so much. Egypt is a country that uses water four times. We recycle the water four times for its users, besides the so many programs that we are doing. And is that enough for us? We felt that this is not enough. Part of our story to face the impact of climate change in our very speedy development process at all fronts is really to show the citizen that they have a role to do and what the future would seem so that they would be aware and share with us some responsibility. The message here before showing the video is that the development partners should be responsible and up to the challenge that we are giving them in the next 58 days and try to bring that into reality. And please use the financial mechanisms for the UNFCCC. They were born to serve the developing countries in order to fulfill their commitments. They cannot just go back and say, we would like only, for an example, to fund bankable projects, to fund the energy. We have a unique opportunity in the food and water part of the nexus. That part will relieve the tension between mitigation and adaptation. All of you who have been attending the COPs and the negotiation process, and as we go even to COP28, we know that adaptation is not bankable. Here is a big challenge in front of the development partners at the foremost will be the MDBs to show that that package can move one step in making agriculture and water bankable. It will be just one small step. And how can we do that? By getting and pitching in the fund to de-risk the capital of the investment in that part. And that story has been done in the renewable energy and we would be able to do it right now in the adaptation pillar. We are all ready, whether myself, Rania, the whole government, our dear ministers of agriculture and water, and all of the cabinet to support that process, to go to the cup and show that the water and food serves the basic need and that Egypt was able to put the basic needs of the Egyptian citizen in the heart of the climate discussion. And that would turn the COP from the stereotype to a real COP of implementation that looks at the humanity at large. Allow me to show you in this video how we exemplified our future for our future generations so that they are really aware that the climate change is not only a reality, but it is a big fight that we all have to win, and they have a stack in that process. Thank you very much. This is not normal. This is not normal. This is not normal. Wow! And this is not normal. All 
of this isn't far from happening due to climate change. But first, what is climate change? Simply, climate change is the drastic change in temperature on Earth because of all the different emissions we cause by our irresponsible behavior towards the planet, causing change in temperature during different seasons, sea level rise, even soil has dried up, and the disappearing of food that we love. But Egypt started combating climate change by aiming to preserve the environment with the latest projects and achievements, like solar power plants, eco-friendly transportations that help reduce emissions. We started waste recycling and water treatments for reuse again, as well as many other ways. And now your turn has come to help return nature to its nature. Live Green, Presidential Initiative for Spreading Environmental Awareness, Live Green campaign by the Ministry of Environment. And this year, Egypt is hosting the 27th Conference of Parties on Climate Change, COP27. Thank you, Dr. Yasmin, for that very strong call for action and um, really putting out the risks out there. So um, before we really move on now into the main uh, program and presentations, as Dr. Rania said, of the food and water pillars, I just want to take um, a little bit, a few minutes just to uh, remind many of us what the Nawafi really is all about. And the Nawafi program, the Arabic translation of the phrase fulfilling pledges aims to accelerate a national climate agenda and provides opportunities for mobilizing climate finance and private investments to support Egypt's green transition, reflecting the interlinkages and complementarities between climate action and development efforts. It was developed on the back of the announcement of the Egypt's 2050 country climate strategy and the nationally determined contribution. Mobilizing finance for the three pillars of the Nawafi program follows a multi-stakeholder approach that ensures the alignment and coherence among all actors. Leveraging on Egypt's partnerships with multiple stakeholders, Egypt is leading efforts to mobilize finance, avail technical assistance, and catalyze private investment through innovative financing modalities, including blended finance for Nuafi projects, as we've all heard. And Nuafi integrates a set of high priority projects for adaptation and mitigation, bundled around the nexus of the three main pillars of water, food, and energy and selected through a prioritization process led by the government of Egypt. These climate action projects are to be implemented under a programmatic approach and include projects that would replace existing inefficient thermal power plants with renewable energy, enhance small farmers adaptation to climate risks, increase crop yields and irrigation efficiency, building resilience of vulnerable regions and developing water desalination capacity, establishing early warning systems, and modernizing on-farm practices. Therefore, as partners, we applaud Egypt's efforts in inaugurating the country platform for the Nuafi program. I hereby would like now to call upon my, my brother <laughs> um, and also a, a sister partner from um, from the African Development Bank, who will take us through the, the water pillar and, um, and really give us what the African Development Bank will be uh, doing in this um, important section. Uh, my sister Dina, thank you very much. Um, Your Excellency, my sister, Dr. Rania al mashat Minister of International Cooperation. Your Excellency, uh, my other sister, Yasmin Faud. I have too many sisters. Members of the development group, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for inviting the African Development Bank to this round table devoted to the flagship projects under the Nwafi 
program, it's, uh, particularly the water pillar. Allow me to first congratulate the government of Egypt for establishing the Nexus I'll say it in full on water, food, and energy platform, otherwise called NOAFI, which aims to expedite the implementation of the country's climate agenda through the recently approved nationally determined contribution, which is in turn underpinned by the bold national climate change strategy of for 2050. The record time within which Nwafi was put together attests to the strong political will and visionary and strong as well as capacity of the technical leadership. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the basic premise of the nexus between water, food, and energy is that the production or use of these three resources are inter intrinsically linked and in many cases interdependent. Accordingly, as populations continue to rise and urbanization accelerates, the strain on Africa's water, energy, and food resources will be inevitable. Egypt is no exception, and hence, in my view, the wisdom of Nwafi. Through the Nexus on Water, Food, and Energy Program, Egypt, which is hosting COP27, is demonstrating enviable leadership on how a country's climate goals can be achieved while guaranteeing the development needs of its populace. The African Development Bank strongly subscribes to this philosophy, which is aligned with four of our, of our, high, of our, of our five priority areas, namely Light Up and Power Africa, Feed Africa, Industrialize Africa, and improve the quality of lives of the people of Africa. We are therefore delighted to partner with the government of Egypt on this initiative. Moreover, I note that our new country strategy for Egypt for the period 2022 to 2026, which we launched yesterday, is fully aligned with the country's 2050 climate change strategy, while the associated NAUFI water pillar, whose actualization the African Development Bank is privileged to lead, aligns with the bank's water strategy, which aspires for a secure, uh, for a water secure Africa. You will be pleased to note that the bank is not new to the Egyptian water sector. On the contrary, we are involved in the delivery of climate resilient, integrated, and sustainable water resource management in the form of an ongoing uh, bank project, which entails treatment and reuse of wastewater from Cairo's 12 million people for irrigation. The bank's leadership of Naufi's water pillar will therefore serve to cement and indeed enhance the partnership with Egypt in the water sector. At this juncture, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to cite the ongoing Kigari uh, bulk water project as an excellent example of the bank's application of innovative financing through public-private partnerships to improve water security. Specifically focusing on the water pillar, this is embodied by three projects. There is the water desalination using renewable energy project, whose objective is to construct six solar desalination plants with a total capacity of 625,000 cubic meters per day. It will benefit 4 million Egyptians and ensure adaptation to fresh water shortages while reducing CO2 emissions. The second, scaling up solar pumps for irrigated agriculture project, seeks to take advantage 
of Egypt's excellent irradiation to upscale the use of solar palms for small farmers and rural remote communities in Egypt. Firstly, to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. Secondly, to avoid negative impacts of fu future energy crises and impacts on food production. And thirdly, to adapt to reduced rainfall on account of climate change, thereby enhancing the food security and guaranteeing farmers predictable income. Here, Your Excellencies, you will be pleased to note that the bank is already undertaking similar projects in Sudan, where we are installing 100, 1,000, sorry, 1,170 solar uh, uh, PV pumps to replace diesel-based water pumps. The third project on improved agriculture, uh, the climate resilience project, aims to improve climate resilience of agriculture uh, by sustainable modernize, sustainably modernizing on-farm irrigation systems. This will lead to enhancing water efficiency and productivity under, under water scarc scarcity conditions. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in our role as leader of Nwafi's water pillar, we have already reached out to international financing institutions to establish the level of interest. The results have been staggering. We have elicited interest of 2.38 billion, including 121 million in grants against a target of 1.36 billion, broken down as follows. For the water desalination using renewable en energy project, we have been able to elicit interest of 1.325 billion. While for the scaling up of solar pumps for irrigation project, we have elicited interest of $102 million. While for the, for the improved agriculture climate resilience, by modernizing on-farm pr practices project, we have been able to elicit interest of $945 million. This confirms interest in Wafi's water pillar, which is further corroborated by the, sorry, by the 14 international finance institutions which express interest in the projects and the seven, namely the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, the Islamic Development Bank, IFAD, the World Bank, the Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank, the European Investment Bank, and of course, the African Development Bank, who have provided indicative levels of financial support. The next theref steps, therefore, entail developing and the building blocks for bankable or financeable projects in consultation with the government of Egypt, as well as other stakeholders, including lenders, private sector, and the civil society. The building blocks include, amongst others, the strengthening of policy reforms for enhanced sustainability and attracting private sector investment in the water sector. Secondly, enhancing capacity to foster circularity in the water sector through what wastewater reuse and resource recovery. And thirdly, building capacity and institutional structures supportive of increased climate smart water investments. Finally, deepening engagements with potential lenders and developers as necessary to foster conditions that will result in efficient financing, for example, through pl platforms such as the Alliance for Green Infrastructure Projects, which can enhance bankability or financeability of projects by de-risking projects and crowding in the private sector in, in the case of public-private partnerships uh, projects. Finally, I thank all the international financial institutions that have expressed interest to support the Nuafi water pillar projects. Let's Nuafi together for the sake of Egypt's water security and for the sake of evidencing how we can practically transition from pledges to implementations. I thank you. very much, Dr. Kevin Karaoke. Uh, he, was vice, he is the Vice President for Power, Energy, Climate Change, and Green Growth. So that in itself is already a very integrated portfolio. 
Um, so ladies and gentlemen, I have the task of introducing myself, um, and this is to show the uh, agility of, and versatility of partnerships where we, we can wear multiple hats. Uh, I'm Dina Saleh, the Regional Director for the Near East, North Africa and Europe Division at the International Fund for Agriculture Development, IFAD. And we at IFAD, like our colleagues and friends and brothers and sisters at the other um, multilateral development banks, um, feel that the Nuwafi nexus is really uh, speaks for, for itself. Because um, when you look at it, these are not mutually exclusive sectors. These are very much mutually reinforcing sectors, and I think we all agree to that. So first, let me begin by adding IFAD's voice to congratulating the government of Egypt for paving the way and for walking the talk. You have been bold enough to take the bull by its horns, and for that, we commend you. As a member of the international community, I am proud and IFAD is proud and honored by this partnership. Under the Egypt country platform for the nexus on water, food and energy, Nuwafi. IFAD as a UN, but also a specialized UN agency, but also an international financing institution, we feel we bring the bridge between financing and the financial institutions and the technical specialization of the United Nations agencies. The value of our partnership goes beyond financing. And we feel that being involved in this flagship project will in, it will in fact give us the opportunity to really leverage on our technical expertise, but also to leverage on our strengths as development partners. I would really like to take the opportunity, as my colleague also just did, to recognize the valuable and significant commitments of the partners who swiftly announced their commitments to Nuwafi under the food pillar. And these are the African Development Bank, the European Investment Bank, the Asia Infrastructure um, Investment Bank, the Agence Française de Développement, the Islamic Development Bank, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, the EU, among, and, and this was in no particular order and in, not in any particular um, ranking of the, the amounts that have been pledged. And we are really counting on our other UN and IFI partners to come forward. We, we count on all partners in the spirit of Nuwafi to really realize the objectives of this excellent initiative. The next phase is the unlocking of the great potential from the private sector. And we are encouraged by the conversations that we have been having, and we do see the momentum building up. Ladies and gentlemen, the threat to food security and missing the SDGs is real unless we do something today. The time to act is now. We are confident that the Nuwafi flagship will be the platform that promotes integrated development approaches and a model for sustainable development beyond Egypt. So as we have all been saying, let's Nuwafi together. And later during the presentation, my colleague uh, will be presenting the uh, food pillar in more details where we'll show you the progress that has been made so far. So with that, thank you very much uh, for this. And I will now move on to my other job, which is to present the next part of this, uh, of this session. And here I would like to um, invite a, our distinguished uh, panelists who are sitting here with us today. Uh, Dr. Hisham Gaffer, he is the Senior Advisor for International Cooperation in the Water and Wastewater Sector of the Ministry of Housing, Utilities and Urban Communities, who will be talking to us about the water desalination using renewable energy under the water pillar. Welcome.
Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today I'm very happy to be here with you and also I'm glad to be in the NOAFI program. I'm gonna uh, present uh, the desalination project that we are now uh, actually in a need for it. First, I would like to tell you that, that the government had decided that they have a new policy that all the coastal area will using will be using uh, desalination water with the renewable energy. Uh, and uh, this program, uh, just I'll give you a brief about the situation in Egypt in a, in a, in a fast way, so I cannot uh, delay anything. I would like to explain first that uh, regarding the situation now, we have 82 plants with a capacity of 917 thousand meter cube per day and the income projects we have another 14 projects with a capacity of five one eight thousand per day so total it's about one four four million cubic meter a day recently we have a strategic plan for this from 20 to 2050 2020 to 2050 the total amount requested uh, for these plants, it will be 8.84 million cubic meter a day. This is a massive amount of desalination water. Just to give you an idea that in Saudi Arabia, only they are producing about 5 million cubic meter a day. This is our target for the next 30, day, 30 years. We are uh, divided this uh, plan into uh, six years multiplied by five. First, five years our request is about 3.4 million uh, cubic meter a day and the, 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 the details of this our colleague engineer Karim Badr will explain exactly the situation from that from the sovereign farm. Uh, also I would like to tell you that the Egyptian state ownership policy documents had included that the desalination products among the country it will be handled by the private sector for the coming years uh, to, that to, to be sure that we have a sustainability and to keep the assets uh, in a good condition after all these uh, years in uh, working. Our proposal now for the projects is we have uh, uh, a pile of projects in uh, Ras al-Hikmah, Matra Martua. It's, uh, five solar desalination plants with a capacity of 525 cubic meter a day under NWAFI program. This is the, what we exactly what we are asking for. The project duration will be in three years uh, and the, the, the beneficiaries with about 7 million by the target year with 2050. This is the details and exactly explaining that uh, from the first one, for the first five years, we need this is uh, the total amount. It will be 150 for Hargada, 1,000 cubic meter a day. For uh, Rasben S, 1 million. Sorry, it's uh, multiplied uh, by 1,000. This is 250,000 for West Ras al Hekmeh, 250,000 Middle Alexandria, and another one, 100 for East Porsaid. The total is. 1,750 multiplied by 1,000 at the year of the, of the end of the, the, the plan. Of course, the destination is sustainable development goals, targeting them and linking to them very much. And of course, it will help the mitigations and the goals of infrastructure, improving the quality of standard of living of Egyptian citizens. And they have many other goals uh, regarding this is all the SDGs related to the desalination and also this mitigation and the goals we are aiming. This is the four governorates which have the, the old projects uh, for under NUAFI. And now after that, uh, of course, uh, Mr. Karim Bad from the Sovereign Fund, the CEO from the Sovereign Fund, will explain because we will not sit here, you know, I think we have a massive amount also from the installation, about 20 more. So engineer Karim Badr will give you more details of what, what exactly we need. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Hisham, and, um, and thank you also for introducing Dr. Karim Badr. Um, he is the CEO, Infrastructure and Utilities Subfund at the Sovereign Fund of Egypt, and he too will be providing us with more details about the water desalination uh, program. Thank you. Um, hello, ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellency uh, Dr. Rania, Your Excellency Dr. Yasmin, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today I'm going to present uh, the collective effort of the Sovereign Fund of Egypt along with the different government stakeholders when it comes to the desalination program. And it is important to highlight that this desalination program is a manifestation of the plan and vision of the Ministry of Housing, Utilities and Urban Communities in order to implement this ambitious plan that Dr. Hisham has mentioned. Um, I think it, sorry. Uh, okay, so first of all, uh, as Dr. Rania mentioned, the, the, the water is a key and strategic sector for Egypt. Uh, it is important for us to have a diversified sources uh, of water, and specifically, as Dr. Yasmin mentioned, uh, not just for desalination and potable drinking water, but also to free up the Nile water for the irrigation and the cultivation of new uh, um, agriculture land across Egypt. In light of that, the Ministry of Housing has put together this uh, ambitious plan to have 8.8 .8 million cubic meters uh, of capacity to be developed between now and 2050. And this coincides uh, uh, nicely with the sovereign funds of Egypt's mandate to really bring in the private sector into key strategic sectors, whether in the infrastructure uh, 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 Avenue or other uh, key uh, and strategic, uh, uh, you know, elements within within the mandate. I think from that perspective, uh, TSFE has been mandated by the cabinet through a government task force that includes all the different stakeholders within the government to manage and uh, uh, launch the seawater desalination program on behalf of the Ministry of Housing. The program entails five key uh, uh, points. Firstly is to develop an action plan for the pre-qualification and tender processes to achieve a competitive tariff for the desalinated water. Secondly, to localize the manufacturing of components used in the process and to also transfer of associated technologies that is globally into Egypt. Third is to select and prioritize the stations to be tendered through a clear process. And then fourth, to bring in uh, renewable energy as, as a powering resource into this uh, uh, you know, strategic sector. And then finally, is to secure competitive sources of financing in coordination with the Ministry of International Cooperation to attract cheap, long-term financing that gets us the most competitive tariffs. I think from that perspective, if we look at the program, you'll see that there is roughly around 20 uh, desalination plants uh, spread over 10 governorates with uh, an initial requirement of around 3.3 million cubic meters per day of capacities that will expand over the next uh, 30 years to reach 5.9 or around 6 million cubic meters. The, the additional uh, 2.8 uh, to reach the 8.8 .8 will come in plants that will come through the next 30 years as well. Uh, if we look at how we're looking at this, the Sovereign Fund of Egypt has, has hired uh, European uh, Bank for Reconstruction and Development, the EBRD, and the IFC to act as process advisors. And we are looking into a typical project financing structure, whereby, as uh, uh, Engineer Hisham said, it's really about implementing um, the, the state's uh, ownership policy document to bring in the private sector into this key strategic uh, uh, element. And we look at the different stakeholders, primarily the Ministry of Housing through the holding company for water and wastewater, and NUCA, the new urban and communities uh, authority, in addition to the Suez Canal Authority as the main off-takers of this program. Additionally, you will find uh, you know, um, 
the lenders and the Ministry of Finance providing the necessary guarantees and financing, while the sovereign fund of Egypt will ultimately hold uh, a 20% stake across these uh, projects to ensure that the government and the private sector work hand in hand in this strategic uh, project. Um, I think from that perspective, the committee and, and, and uh, the, the, the sovereign fund has put together a key steps to reach that goal. To now we are at this, the, the fourth stage of these key strategic steps, which is the pre-qualification process of the different developers in order to uh, qualify them for the tendering process of the different uh, plans. On that perspective, I think it's important to highlight how this process has been going. So the steering committee has been issued by, a, has been established by a prime minister's decree, and it's headed by the first assistant to the prime minister, uh, Dr. Uh, engineer Rondal Minchewi, and it encompasses the key government stakeholders. And this is important to highlight that this could not be done without the collective effort of the government. Uh, we have uh, uh, the task of uh, you know, overseeing the whole pre-qualification and tender process and to ensure that the, the process is going at the right pace and attracting the right investors and financial institutions. The, the first uh, step right now is the pre-qualification process and this was launched back in August. We have currently around 200 developers and finance, financial institutions uh, and uh, uh, suppliers and, and, and uh, uh, you know, operators, whether on the renewable side or on the water desalination side, that have requested the pre-qualification document. Uh, from that perspective, we're looking to uh, finalize that process within the next um, you know, uh, one to two months. And based on that, we will launch the RFP uh, for the different uh, uh, desalination plants. The plan is to launch these uh, uh, plants in packages in order to, uh, you know, over the next probably 18 months, launch the whole program for the 20 stations. Um, we anticipate that, um, you know, the first batch will be uh, roughly uh, composed of six stations constituting around US dollar 1.2 billion of investments and the entire program to attract around US dollar 3.3 billion of investments. Uh, we look at the, the timeline, you'll see that uh, we have now launched the pre-qualification process. We're in the process of receiving the requests and, and the, the applications for pre-qualification. Once that is done and we have a short list, we will then tender uh, in sequence a number of projects, as I mentioned, over the next 18 months, whereby we're hoping that the first uh, set of plans would be awarded by uh, you know, first half of 2023 uh, in order to uh, get this project off, uh, you know, the, the, the firing station. So it is important to, to highlight again that uh, this is, in, in, is being done in conjunction with NOEFI program. We believe that the NOEFI program has, uh, you know, the appetite and uh, my friend Dr. Kevin has mentioned that there is roughly around $1.3 billion of financing that is availed for the, 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 um, the desalination program. And we believe that it should not just be limited to the six plants that have been mentioned, but also this collective effort of an additional 20 plants could benefit from this uh, strategic program and this uh, financing from our partners uh, across the different financial institutions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Badr, and um, I would now like to give the floor to uh, Mr. Michel Roussin, who is the Senior Water and Sanitation Officer, and he will give us a technical presentation on the water desalination flagship project. Excellency, uh, Mrs. Ministers, um, Mr. Vice, -Pre Vice President uh, from the African Development Bank, uh, distinguished uh, mighties. Um, I mean, I'm going to present briefly uh, 
what we have been doing uh, with the government of Egypt, mainly uh, Moik. I think here it has been um, said that you know uh, now the idea is trying to see how we convene more um, um, development finance institution. I mean to support this this NOEFI uh, initiative and. Uh, the ministry, uh, let's say the minister of uh, Moik uh, has been extremely um, active in, in, that, in that regard. Um, actually, uh, the, the background of this support from the African Development Bank uh, to the government is definitely, I mean, the, the NWEFI program. And um, as you know, um, let's say Egypt has been, you know, experiencing this scarcity, but also the fragility sort of, of the of uh, water, um, energy, uh, but also you know food. So um, in that regard, I mean, um, they, they they actually set up this ambitious um, um, uh, NUEFI program, which the bank is leading on the water pillar, and I think my vice president said it clearly. Um, so in the context of this um, um, water pillar. There is specifically, I mean, one project which represents actually half the total value of the of the water pillar, um, roughly, I mean, um, 600 million um, that the bank is supporting. I mean, um, the government of Egypt uh, on. So next, uh, next slide, please. Okay, so okay, we could we could move it here from here. Yeah. How do we? So, um, as you said, and as you have seen, we actually supporting also in these four governorates uh, where we're looking at, you know, supporting the resource mobilization, but also the transaction process um, of five desalination plants. Uh, these, five, these five desalination plants, I mean, looking at over the next five years, I mean, 2025, 2030, I mean, to kind of produce uh, something like 525,000 um, um, cubic meter per day. But at the end of the day, I mean, at the end of the, 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 the total cycle in 2050, it is going to be um, something like six times more. Um, and then now we can see how, you know, this production capacity, I mean, uh, is distributed, I mean, across the five uh, plants. Of course, we have the RAS banners, uh, which is more important. Um, and then uh, East Port of Side, which is, uh, the smallest one with around uh, 100,000, I mean, 100,000 uh, cubic meter uh, per day. Um, but I think uh, looking at this, for us, the, the main focus is not necessarily um, what is going to be done, but here it's how it's going to be done, why it's going to be done, how, the, the way it's going to be done, and also try to see how we question, you know, um, the way we do things. And this is how, I mean, we see our comparative advantage in, in supporting, I mean, the government of Egypt. So, um, it's not moving, maybe. Okay. So, one of the points here is also looking at the technology. So, we all agree that, you know, over the past few years, there has been a complete shift from a thermal desalination uh, technology to membrane one. And um, uh, I think uh, at the beginning of the, of, of the I mean, early 20, I mean, 2000s, um, the MENA region was a little bit behind with almost 50-50 sharing amount, um, I mean, among, between membrane and thermal. But now they are, we can see that, I mean, they're catching up, I mean, the train. So uh, now they are almost in the same proportion with the, with the entire globe on this. And we need to understand, I mean, why why this move, why this shift? Um, so in terms of operationalization, I mean, when we want to operationalize, I mean, this, this, this kind of plant, it's also good, I mean, to make sure that we, we have the global picture in head, uh, in mind, by the time we start this kind of project, in case we decide to go with membrane or maybe thermal, uh, we need to know where we think the comparative advantage for the government are, uh, when, I mean, which part we have to outsource, uh, which part we think we maybe have to keep, uh, and then, you know, because we think that we, we, we actually going to have a better, I mean, competitive advantage on it. And this is going to have an effect 
actually on the resource, resource mobilization side and the, the strategy for mobilizing, I mean, financing. Um, in terms of capital, I mean, um, uh, capex and opex, uh, we can clearly see, you know, how it's distributed, I mean, uh, across the, the entire value chain. And then, you know, based on this, uh, the idea for us was to try to, you know, kind of provide, an, I mean, kind of support uh, the government so that they can make an informed decision on which kind of technology they use uh, um, um, and also which kind of arrangement they make. And in terms of benefits, um, of course, we all agree that uh, Membrane is getting more and more, you know, space. Um, because they are clearly, you know, um, uh, an advantage at using membrane, uh, like uh, there is an IR efficiency, uh, the market is quite mature, uh, there is a lot of co uh, competition over the market, which is good, I mean, for the, for the bidding price. Um, but that said, uh, at the beginning, we actually, dis I mean, we actually discussed, I mean, with the government of, of, of Egypt, um, which, which form of financing uh, to use. We were thinking between, you know, a simple EPC to, you know, uh, a full BOT or BOT, you know, approach. Uh, and then they came up, I mean, a few days ago saying, oh, no, 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 we, we uh, actually, we don't, we don't need EPC. Uh, we want, you know, um, to transfer maximum risk to the, to the private sector, uh, w which is good, which is good. But that said, now, I mean, we also need to, to be mindful of the, I mean, the total project, should we, you know, a kind of um, um, give the, two, I mean, the, the, the entire project to the private entity, or maybe we embody, I mean, the, the project in the way that we keep certain portion where we think in terms of resource mobilization, we can have a comparative advantage. These are the critical questions, that, I mean, that we need to, we need to look at. And here, um, I think we have, we have, put here this, uh, this map because we think, uh, and for me, this is definitely uh, one of the most important, um, I mean, kind of uh, um, uh, graph uh, because it shows, you know, how I mean, the, 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 the potential, I mean, uh, financing source that we can have for this project and eventually how, you know, the government can make a very strategic, you know, decision uh, to leverage maximum, I mean, on the climate finance and, and pure grants, you know, for this kind of project. Uh, of course, we want to have private sector, but we have to, you know, uh, kind of uh, procure and also make this kind of uh, decision um, strategically so that, you know, at the end of the day, uh, the end user is not going to pay um, too much for um, the cubic meter of water that it's going to use. Uh, in terms of potential financiers to date that the bank has been able, I mean, to, to, to um, um, convene, uh, we actually have IFAD, I think uh, we here have the regional director, uh, every ID, uh, the colleagues from, from Minister of Housing uh, mentioned it. The World Bank is also there. Uh, and then when you see, I mean, what you actually see all these, there are a good number of them who actually uh, want to, bring uh, sovereign resources, sovereign. So once we mention this aspect, then we need to, have to, to be very uh, strategic on how we use these resources, because if we want to, I mean, kind of outsource the entire project, then we're going to lose also part of this, you know, uh, benefit. So, I mean, we, we kind of brainstorming, but this is just the beginning of the journey with the government, and we look forward I mean, actually to, to to um, improve, you know, the way we uh, manage this kind of project and how we can optimize the few resources that we have. And here we have the way forward. And I said it. This is just the beginning. Uh, we have. We currently want to uh, support the government in gathering additional, you know, uh, information and data, and then later firm up. I mean, kind of the 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 development model but also the structure. And then by, by end next month, we want to finalize, I mean, the concept paper, which is already uh, existing in draft format. And then next step is try to see how we can discuss, how we can work on the project structuring, you know, model uh, for, for specifically this kind of project, because 
as I said again, it's good to do things. Uh, I mean, it's, it's good, I mean, to question the way we do things uh, instead of doing it uh, systematically. Uh, and then, I mean, by the, by, let's say, um, um, mid uh, November, uh, we're looking at, you know, finalizing a kind of typical uh, billing document uh, that, you know, um, the, the government can use going forward. But meanwhile, there has been one question that came, you know, uh, in our mind, which is, uh, should we maybe, should we or not, you know, think about transactional advisory service vis-a-vis -vis the government of Egypt. And I think you guys mentioned the fact that you are already working with IFC. So uh, I think, uh, and I'm talking under the control of the, 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 the vice president here uh, for private sector uh, at the African Dream Bank. This is definitely something we can, we can, we can push for. He can, he can come back on that. We can give him um, the, the, the mic. Um, and there are quite a few, you know, competitive advantage at, at working with the African Dream Bank, especially, I mean, taking to consideration the new uh, bank PPP framework, which has been, you know, uh, developed very recently. So I want to stop here and then thank you so very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Michel, for that and really unpacking for us what the water desalination flagship project is about and where we stand. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we are still at the at the stage where um, a lot of uh, ideas can still be brought on board and a lot of partnerships can still be incorporated. So the, the call is out there. Now, as we're talking of a nexus, and um, we know that it's all about water, food, and energy, I'm now pleased to call upon our um, colleague, Dr. Iman Sayyid who is the head of the planning sector from the Ministry of Water Resources and Irrigation, who will also now take us through the on-farm irrigation of the old lands and the Food Pillar flagship project. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, thank you, Dina, for uh, this uh, uh, important uh, session. And uh, as you mentioned, water is important for all of uh, other sectors. Uh, maybe I will start with uh, the challenges faced for the water sector in Egypt. Uh, as you may know, uh, most of uh, Egypt water resources is uh, coming out of uh, our borders. So we have 97% uh, of our water resources is a uh, transboundary water. We have only limited amount of renewable water, water, which is about 60 billion cubic meter per year. And we have the major sector consumes water, which is agriculture sector consume about 75% of our water resources. And we have to fulfill uh, the demand for all other sectors like drinking water. And for that, we have the whole strategy for the government, which already uh, originated the strategy for desalination and also with water treatment. And we have mega project for water use. On the same side, we have to work on rationalize the use in the water in the agriculture sector which is modernization of the whole system. It's not only the on-farm modernization. We are talking about uh, uh, system modernization, how we are going to deliver water to farmers and to avail the water all uh, uh, time. Now we are working, and maybe uh, Egypt is famous with uh, farmers who are successful in agriculture since um, uh, the years of ancients, but now, uh, is not a guarantee to have a successful also practices in the agriculture sector. We have to modernize the way of uh, allocating water. We have to uh, start working in different areas like awareness for farmer, availing advisory for farmer to use modern technique. It's not only in installing uh, drip irrigation and the sprinkler one, but we need to change and shift from uh, rotation system to continuous flow. Uh, farmers would like to see the water all times. Uh, Egypt, in this regard, started to have uh, mega projects in terms of uh, modernize the network. It started from rehabilitation of um, uh, barrages and also regulators, uh, Esna barrage, uh, Asur barrage, and uh, other barrages on, this, uh, on, uh, on the stage of rehabilitation. At the same side, we started a mega project for canal rehabilitation, which is one of the most important projects to uh, 
redesign the cross section of canal and also to rehabilitate all the infrastructures and also to make uh, more uh, technology and more uh, uh, way to uh, operate the system. At the same time, now we are working on canal rehabilitation. We would like to improve the MESCA and would like to have uh, on-farm modernization to uh, achieve the overall goal. We would like to increase the productivity from land and water as well. Uh, we have a lot of exercise with and also experience with on-farm uh, modernization. We see farmers started to increase their production uh, with about 30% of the original uh, production and also started uh, to earn more money and also to uh, save more fertilizers which reflect on the quality of the water and reflect on uh, the quality of the drainage water. Um, this is uh, uh, serve the whole strategy of Egypt and focus on the own farm project. We would like to uh, assure that our colleague in the Ministry of Agriculture, however, I didn't see um, representative from them. They are working closely with farmers, so we need to have more uh, advisory uh, uh, service with farmers uh, for best practices and also to um, advise farmers how they can apply uh, modern irrigation from our side as a ministry of water resources, as we are the manual and uh, mandate of the ministry is to deliver water for all sectors, not only for farmers and agriculture, but also uh, we are uh, mandated to deliver water for uh, drinking water and also uh, the electricity stations. So we will take care about uh, the canal rehabilitation and we would like to assure the system modernization as a whole. We uh, uh, have a coordination mechanism with Ministry of Agriculture. We work with them and we have ministerial a committee headed by the both of Minister of Agriculture and Irrigation to assure full harmonize among the two components, on farm and also off farm. Uh, in this regard, I'd like to thank you for uh, what you mentioned about uh, interest of most of our development partners to participate in this uh, very important uh, program, which lead to uh, uh, maybe uh, equity to avail water for farmers at the end of canals and also to increase the production, helping the country to face the challenges due to uh, maybe the global crisis, COVID, and also uh, the supply chain uh, crisis and increasing uh, the prices of uh, uh, food all over the world. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank you for uh, your effort and we will work closely with uh, all of you to finalize uh, the project and also to identify the roles and responsibilities for all of uh, the uh, that chain not only the two ministers but all uh, ministries but also farmers uh, technology private sector who will take the lead to avail the material and supplies to uh, enhance and to modernize uh, the network i'm sorry for uh, not having a presentation but i was advised by organizer to uh, have a speech rather than input thank you Thank you, Dr. Iman, and it's always better to speak from experience. Uh, sometimes presentations control uh, what, we, what we know from the ground, and I think the realities that you brought out there and the, and the coordination, the importance of the coordination between the ministries and between the partners working, um, as well as not forgetting the smallholder farmers and the farmers that um, we also uh, engage in the partnerships that we have on the ground. I just wanted to add that um, we also want to thank you, the Ministry of um, Water uh, Resources and Irrigation. Um, from our 40 years, 40 plus years of working in Egypt, you have been a long-standing partner of, of IFAD. And I think together we did work on some flagship projects, the OPIDO, the on-farm irrigation in, um, irrigation uh, development in the old lands. Um, this was... Uh, Ofido, and um, we work together with you and with the ministry and with the Ministry of Agriculture and Land Reclamation. And I'm really pleased to say that over these 40 plus years, we have re worked towards improved irrigation of more than 447,000 fed dens, uh, reaching almost 7 million or even more than 7 million beneficiaries. So I think this is quite an achievement, 
really looking forward to continuing this cooperation. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like now to call my colleague, Dr. Mohammed Abdul Gadir, who is the country director of Egypt. He will present to us the food pillar presentation for North Egypt. Thank you very much, uh, Dina, and uh, excellencies, ladies, gentlemen, uh, uh, colleagues, salam alaikum. Uh, to avoid saying good afternoon or evening, I don't know what is <laughs> what is it. Uh, and um, as Dina said, uh, which one, Dina? Uh, okay, this is, uh, I'm going to present the, the, the food pillar uh, with emphasis on uh, the on-farm and off-farm uh, uh, projects. And uh, as you can see that the food pillars uh, uh, of NOFI compose of five uh, projects. Uh, and uh, with the understanding of uh, Dr. Iman just said, uh, with the system approach, it will be six projects out of the nine projects. Two thirds of the projects, although the, the, the financial involved might be smaller, but uh, it's, a, it's a huge work of um, technical work. So uh, the food pillar composed of, uh, of five uh, uh, projects, uh, uh, one, uh, one uh, on the adaptation of crop production in the Nile Valley Delta, uh, the second one on the adaptation of Northern Delta affected by the sea level rise, and those who attended yesterday's uh, His Excellency the Minister of Irrigation uh, I think this is uh, one of the challenges the Minister of Irrigation is now facing. And uh, yeah, he considered it as one of the, of the key challenges the ministry is facing. And then we have the resilience for most vulnerable and marginal regions, uh, plus the on-farm irrigation on on lands and the, uh, the establishing an early warning system. The beauty of this, uh, program is that uh, it has many e in uh, innovative uh, features uh, because it's an integrated uh, approach, it's holistic uh, in terms of design as well as of execution because it's include uh, uh, different ministries, different stakeholders, private sectors, banks and all. Uh, the project is also a strategic combined technical aspects uh, of uh, modern irrigation and water resources with improving and evolving uh, plant varieties, uh, uh, heat tolerant, uh, targeting breeding programs, and uh, others. Uh, it's, uh, it's very innovative, diverse in terms of lending financing, and we will uh, we'll see later how that, that is going to be very innovative, although it will be difficult, but it will be innovative. Uh, uh, and then the project will, will build the blocks uh, uh, for, the, for the country, uh, for the country's long-term climate change strategy, inshallah. Uh, if had, uh, I, I will not stay long uh, on this uh, uh, slide because um, uh, we have a long experience working on that, and later on we will say that we will you will see that this project is based on on a knowledge, um, a lot of knowledge, a lot of lessons learned, and uh, it's, a, it's it's just an upscaling of. A, a previous experience here in, uh, in, in Egypt. So it's contextual as well as is based on lessons learned. Uh, the pledges for food pillars is, uh, is impressive. And uh, so, so far, uh, I think we, we have um, pledges of more than 70% of, of the total involved for these pillars. Uh, of course, it differs from one. Uh, uh, project to another, uh, but uh, the, the, the project which is uh, which attracts many many development partners is 3.4. Uh, it's on farm irrigation uh, on uh, uh, of uh, all lands, uh, and uh, uh, as uh, engineer uh, Dr. Iman said, we look into that from a system approach, and that's why we combined. Uh, 3.4 in the food pillar with 4.6 in the water pillar. And that's why I said we have six projects out of the nine, nine projects. Uh, so if we zoom in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the project, uh, which uh, it's, a, it's a combined between 3.4 and 6. Point, say, I think this is just a description of the, of the project and some sort of uh, what we call the theory of change. Uh, 
uh, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it addresses both on-farm and off-farm uh, activities as well as uh, building the, the, the capacities and the technologies uh, uh, related to the, to the sector as a whole. Uh, it's composed of three components, uh, stakeholder capacity building, resilient technologies and agroecological practices, as well as resilient infrastructure. And we expect that will lead to four output. Uh, irrigation system in the north and the delta for an area of 1.5 million is going to be enhanced and rehabilitated. Uh, we are also uh, thinking that solar pumps and re uh, renewable energy applications is going to be adopted. Converge uh, conversion of uh, valley and delta system from flood irrigation to modern irrigations. And we, are, we, we talk about system, we are not talking about on-farm, off-farm, we are talking about the whole system. And then modernization of the old land irrigated with groundwater in the, in the new valley and other areas. And that uh, expected to lead us to two outcomes, improve livelihood of rural communities, because this is one of the, uh, the outcomes which is uh, near to our heart in IFAD, and also higher water efficiency and productivity, as Dr. Iman just said. And overall, the combined objective of the two projects is to improve the irrigation and raising efficiency of the field irrigation system from 50% to 70% through the development of irrigation in the all land of the Nile Valley and the Delta, while it's improving climate resilience of agriculture by means of sustainable modernization of the on-farm irrigation system. The expected outcome of this project is that uh, we, 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 we are expecting or envisaging saving an area of two to three percent of the agricultural uh, land using all service irrigation and hence increasing the economic return at the national and farm level. Uh, poverty is, is going to be reduced and poor households are empowered through increased yield we are expecting the yield will in, in ha increase by 10 to 15 percent, and the income of the smallholders is going to decrease by 20 by 10 to 20 percent. And livelihood of the rural poor communities are improved, including small farmers, landless rural women, and unemployed youth. On farm irrigation, water management, and equitable water distribution. Uh, uh, promoting demand-driven uh, and participatory farming research uh, uh, and extension of crops and water and access to rural finance is going to be enhanced and then improve climate resilience of agriculture by means of sustainable modernization of the on-farm irrigation system. The, 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 uh, the consolidated budget for of the two projects uh, because uh, uh, the, the concept notes is presented on three phases. For uh, phase one is 1.6 billion. For phase two and three, uh, the total will be around 3.5 billion. And the main implementing, uh, these are the, from a technical perspective, are the Ministry of Agriculture and Land Reclamation, Ministry of Water Resources and Irrigation, plus private sector farmers banks. The, the pledges so far for the, for the project is also very, very impressive. Uh, so we, um, we, we have uh, contributions from the African Development Bank. There is, uh, it's not presented in order. Uh, the, uh, um, the, the Asian uh, Infrastructure and Investment Bank, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, the European Investment Bank, the Islamic Development Bank, and EFAD. And these are the, their contribution and pledges for the three, three projects. So we, uh, the, the pledges is almost 94% of the target from the total project uh, budget. It's not from the budget for the development partners. So um, uh, as I said, um, I, I will not go uh, in detail on that. The, this, uh, this is based on uh, experience in, in the context. So we, we learned from our own experience. Uh, we have a project which has been financed by EFAD and implemented by the 
both Minister of uh, Irrigation and Minister of Agriculture. It was closed in 2020. And uh, these are some of the achievement. Uh, what we are trying to say that the, the new project will, will start by the year number four. So there is no learning curve. It, it will start based on a solid, solid uh, uh, knowledge base and, and uh, solid ground. Uh, some of the lessons learned from our previous experience that new irrigation concept, continuous flow, uh, Dr. Iman has said, and the new tools uh, introduced for the first time. Uh, the farmer, we are always putting farmers in the first. Farmers first. Themselves have a role in the water distribution uh, and roles uh, uh, in the water distribution is also uh, accompanied by, by accountability. So the farmers, the Water User Association were trained uh, to value the, the water and to use it uh, more efficiently. The ensuring the extensive, the, 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 the extensive involvement of farmers at early stage of the project increased relevance of the design and then improving the effectiveness. Uh, the beneficiaries experience saving of up to 20% of the cost of irrigation by converting from diesel uh, to electricity. We are expecting that more saving will be uh, witnessed with, by introducing modern low cost renewable energy technologies for bumping and other production uses. And the project implementation units should uh, further engage the use of, uh, of the services of the private sector for the acquisition of key equipment. The next step, as uh, my colleague in the African Development Bank said, that we, we are in the early stage of the preparation. Uh, and uh, so uh, uh, IFAD, the African Development Bank, together with the both ministries, uh, they are, we are working on enhancing the, the, the concept notes so that it has, uh, it has to take into account all these lessons there and it has to be a participatory. We are uh, in continuous discussion with our development uh, partners and frankly, we receive very uh, encouraging response from all of them because IFAD will not be able to lead the design of the five, six projects. So some of the development partners already expressed their interest to lead uh, the design of um, the other projects, which is, uh, which is a good science. Uh, we have to discuss because the pledges are too high uh, in comparison to what we need. We have to discuss with the Minister of International Cooperation how to allocate the pledges for different, uh, different um, development partners. And then there is a lot of um, work for the feasibility study, the design, uh, and it's going to be a long uh, process, um, um, uh, validation of all these uh, basic assumptions uh, uh, contextualization of all these uh, 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 lessons learned, uh, informing the, the design of the of the new project will 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 take a long time, and then hopefully by later next year, uh, the the project design will be in order, and hopefully we will we will sign the financing agreement with the with the government. Thank you very much. And I hope um, to looking forward to the discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mohammed, for that. Um, I think this now also sets the stage clearly for the tasks ahead for all the partners. And um, I think um, taking from this, as you can see, it's very encouraging that in such a short time since early July when this was launched, that we are, have already mobilized a lot of resources, um, as you could see in both presentations. Uh, in the case of the food pillar, we are already at almost 70% or slightly above 70% of the total needs. Um, and I think, um, again, we, we feel that um, this attests to the confidence and, of course, the credibility of this uh, program where we have um, ourselves as IFAD and the African Development Bank been um, encouraged to, to take the lead and also to, to encourage others also to come forward. 
So with that, uh, we are uh, now at the end of the presentations, at the end of the programs, and um, I would like to invite a, a few colleagues um, and uh, some of you who have expressed interest to, to, to intervene, to give us your perspectives, to also um, hopefully also give us your pledges. So to start with, um, I would like to invite um, the Honorable Engineer Collins Nzovu, the Minister of Green Economy and Environment of Zambia, to take the floor. Let me recognize the presence of Dr. Rania and uh, Dr. It's a bit difficult to pronounce, Rasumini. Yeah. Fellow ministers present here, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Um, the first thing really is to recognize the efforts Egypt has made in this space. And I think he, hearing the story, you may, I may, I can only ask you to give them a round of applause. And to also say to the other African states, that COP27 is a COP where Africans, the needs for Africans really must come to the fore. To take the example of Egypt in the water, energy, space, to see how we can come up with those bankable projects and speak to, to resolving what I can call are the, uh, are the centerpieces, the main issues for the climate crisis. As an example, where I come from in Zambia, already we are grappling with provision of water to our people. That same water is the water we need for food. That same water is the same water we need for energy production because we are predominantly hydropower based. How do we resolve the water, food, and energy crisis? How do we leverage financing from the private sector? I think these are questions we need to answer. Indeed, it may seem like we are at a very big disadvantage or serious odds against us because I heard from here everybody talking about us in Africa paying perception prices. The risk is high. We are paying 8%. Hearing the story from ADB about one project in Zambia, um, the, the Batoka, I think the vice president is here. We're just chatting here that the energy transition, how does it look like in the southern region? Other than the renewable solar, wind, the hydropower potential is quite high. The demand is quite high. What we lack is our resources. Other than, apart from developing that hydro potential, we need the transmission lines because the market is big of over 130 million in the Sadiq region alone. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, the Ukraine-Russia war has exposed us. How do we become food secure? How do we do more with little? Egypt indeed is part, mostly a desert. There are certain innovations they are doing but more so to the African states like my, mine. How do we pitch these projects at COP27? This is not, sorry ministers, this is Egyptian ministers, this is not an Egyptian COP, this is an African COP. And we had frank discussions yesterday on how to see that we speak the same voice. How do we leverage our numbers, our natural resources, the potential for Africa, for example, to go into the EV battery chain, value chain, batteries, is huge because the natural, the, the minerals themselves 
are in Africa. The solar potential is huge because of the long hours of sunshine. I've not come to give a long speech, but to encourage all of us that we can do it. And we call upon the private sector to increase the appetite to, 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 to spend. Bankable projects are everywhere. We also request them to be in a hurry because the climate crisis is here. The last point I'd like to make is to thank all of you. Us policymakers are ready. It's unlike before. We are policymakers. We are the ones delaying progress. We are ready to come on board. It's you with the people with the money. Egypt, we thank you and we hope we can have progressive discussions. We hope we can make this truly an African COP that which speaks to us resolving these challenges. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Honorable Nzovu, and um, also for championing the, the government perspective, but also calling upon the private sector to act. So I'd like also now to, to be alerting the private sector that we'd like to hear from them. Before we do so, I'd like to also invite my other brother, Dr. Abdul Hakim Al Wa'ir, the FAO Assistant Director General and Regional Representative for the Near East and North Africa from FAO. You all know we are Rome-based agencies and sister agencies, so we're very happy to have you with us. Thank you. Well, it's good evening, everybody. Um, thank you, Dina, for this introduction. Um, Excellency Minister Rania, Minister Esmina, and all the ministers here with us today. When we talk about the nexus, we always talk about how do we link the dots between the different actions that we take. And it has proven uh, worldwide along the time that working on a single sector without connecting the dots has always fire back, and we find that too late when we want to find it. Um, I think uh, the uh, nexus does bring a lot of opportunities and hopes of uh, resolving issues, and maybe we need to uh, also give a bit more focus on the climate-related issues as the COP coming in when we address energy, food, and water. At our side, at the uh, Food and Agriculture Organization, working closely with the Rome-based agencies, IFAD and WFP, we do address uh, seriously what we can do to the countries in addressing the uh, water and food challenges. And of course, the nexus calls for more interconnectivity and um, uh, we must recognize that Egypt is blessed with a strong leadership that established the connections between sectors. I'm talking as a regional representative and trying to see what is happening elsewhere in other countries in the regions where in some countries, country sectors do not even talk to each other and it is a real challenge to get things done between water, agriculture, environment, and the uh, utilities and the other sectors. Country, I think, uh, like Egypt, is very much blessed in having that uh, very close and deep coordination, and the example is the nexus where you see all sectors involved. The International Cooperation Ministry does a lot of effort in mobilizing financing, funds, and international partners to support it, but there is a lot required from the actual ministries on the ground to make sure that these finances are utilized efficiently for the benefit of the country to achieve the objectives of this nexus and make sure that it delivers what is anticipated to uh, deliver as being put in the plan. I would like to just show some of the examples that are happening recently to draw our attention. Um, we see the example of what happened in Europe recently in 2022 and how the interconnectivity is very important. Extreme drought that hit uh, in, uh, on water resources in Europe reduced the flow of rivers and of course that was affecting the uh, cooling powers of the energy generation plants which is a priority for energy to maintain at the cost of less water for agriculture. Please let us remind ourselves that agriculture sector alone uses over 80% of our water resources. 
So even the plans that we see on the desalination that's aiming to achieve 8.8 .8 million cubic meters a day, we're only talking about urban and drinking needs uh, at this stage. We still need to think very carefully about the other 80% that supplies, which cannot, of course, be fed from the expensive desalination resources. Pakistan floods, we've all seen uh, the impact on, uh, on food, and, and that is where we see the different extremes happening today. Solar power, uh, we at FAO, we look at that option very cautiously, and as much as we support it because it addresses energy, and here where the nexus comes very important. The use of solar power without proper frameworks for water accountability and efficiency may accelerate the depletion of water resources. And we always need to make sure that, and we work very closely, Dr. Iman, with the uh, uh, Ministry of uh, Irrigation and, and Water Resources, to make sure that these water resources, if they are provided at cheap cost for energy, should not be at the cost of depleting water resources. We have seen uh, examples in Morocco at the region where incentive um, through uh, subsidies for gas uh, does accelerate use or misuse of water resources and of, of course increase uh, gas emissions. So these are areas where we need to address very carefully and learn from each other. And this is maybe a call for uh, Egypt as well uh, on developing the nexus. One, as uh, the Honorable Minister mentioned, some examples coming from Africa is to learn from the lessons from other places so we don't fall in the same trap that other countries did. But also bear in mind that uh, Egypt is relatively in the region is very advanced and they, 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 they need to consider providing lessons to other countries that are following the steps afterwards and learn from this uh, um, success that um, Egypt has uh, on the way to achieve and achieved in the past so that we make sure that the region benefit from what Egypt does at this stage. Some of the um, points to consider from the FAO for uh, solutions for world Efficiencies on, the, on the, the use of the nexus and uh, very important to focus on more crops per drops and, and that is very important. That is on the efficiency of the use of the water so that we don't avail the water at cheap cost without thinking of using it efficiently. And we have a very substantive regional project. Egypt is one of the beneficiary countries financed by Sweden on the uh, water scarcity that I'll mention on the list uh, in, the, in, the, in a few seconds. More crop, of course, per kilowatt, and very important is to focus on circularity. Circularity as the economy grows is extremely important. As we see today, what is, could be seen as waste for one can be a resource for the other. And I'm sure uh, Dr. Yasmin at the Environment Ministry are very critical on looking at the possibility of recycling wastewater, but also recycling crop residues uh, for, uh, for production of energy and other uses. Uh, of course, uh, we need to see uh, how we can uh, in encourage the nexus, not only at the country level, but also at regional level. We have worked at FAO with the uh, League of Arab States recently to bring together ministers of water together with ministers of agriculture and try to draw the regional policy for water and agriculture, bearing in mind that agriculture is still the main use of most water resources. Now, specifically on Nuwafi, what uh, FAO does, we have some of the, uh, what we call ongoing projects, and the ongoing projects that we do under Nuwafi from the FAO include the enhancing crop and livestock production and productivity in new lands, in Kafr Sheikh, uh, Bin Suif, and Minya, and Aswan governorates. And this is uh, a project we do together with the uh, ministry, uh, of course, with the FAD and, and the other sister agencies and the Ministry of Agriculture and, La and Land Reclamation. We do also the sustainable management of uh, Karga, uh, um, Karga al, al, al Oasis on agroecosystems uh, of the New Valley. And we do this again with uh, under Jeff and, and it is with the Ministry of Agriculture as well as the improved lives, uh, livelihoods, nutrition and empowerment of rural women uh, and their families in the Minya government. And this is uh, financed by Canada. And the FAO is the, uh, uh, the driver for implementation. And as FAO alone in, uh, in Mantaqat, uh, the region of Buhaira and Minya, we also do improving productivity and reducing poverty of small scale 
milk and dairy producers in the rural villages. And this is with the Ministry of Agriculture. One of the key ones that are on the pipeline at the moment under Muafi is the modernization of irrigation. Dr. Iman spoke about it, and we're working together with the uh, Dutch uh, uh, partners to uh, work on, on the implementation of this on improving the livelihoods and small farmers uh, in, the, in the upper region, as well as building resilience uh, in old lands and combining innovations and irrigation and promoting climate smart agriculture. This is a recent one in Canada, and that is to work on the seawater intrusion in the North Delta, a very important substantive project on introducing some of the resilient saltwater resilient crops for the farmers. Mitigating the emergence of impacts and uh, of antimicrobial resistance. This is for the livestock with the Ministry of Agriculture. And uh, one of the uh, pipelines that our uh, FAO is looking at is supporting the establishment of model guide fields uh, on surgeons and growing areas in the upper region. A uh, few of the uh, uh, quite uh, a number of examples that the FAO is undertaking under the uh, uh, MOAFI implementation for the plan. And uh, of course, we assure our partners as they uh, give us details about the funds mobilized that we remain um, uh, with our um, regional uh, uh, programs and, uh, and our programs within Egypt to support the food and water uh, of the nexus in particular uh, and the use of energy for the uh, agriculture sector and the rural uh, transformation. The last word that we uh, I would like to, to share with you that under the strategic framework of the Food and Agriculture Organization, we aim at agri-food systems transformation. And the agri-food systems transformation actually brings in a nexus of multi-sectorial interventions that address all areas related to land uh, uh, rehabilitation, ecosystem rehabilitation, as well as uh, improving the technologies and the use and efficiency of the water resources uh, and the food production at less cost with uh, more efficiency. With that, I would like to thank you for giving us this opportunity today and look forward to work together with partners and the uh, ministries in Egypt led by uh, International Cooperation Ministry to uh, make sure that we see more results under the nexus coming up next year, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abdel Hakim. So we have our UN already now joining us in this uh, pledge. So uh, thank you for that. And we're looking for more of you to come forward. So let me now um, hand the floor to uh, Mr. Leo Martinez on behalf of uh, Secretary John Kerry. Mr. Leo Martinez is the finance director from the US. And he will be also um, speaking towards this uh, nexus of Nuafi. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I will be brief because I know that folks are beginning to worry about their own personal food security. Um, I think, uh, as Secretary Kerry said uh, on Wednesday, uh, the United States is highly supportive of uh, Nuafi. Uh, we think it's a very innovative and well thought through approach uh, to try to uh, get at the three pillars together. I think the reality is that the pillars still, food, water, and energy, remain fragmented in many of our countries. They remain often in the province of separate ministries. They're often in separate budgets. Uh, the experts often don't talk to one another as much as they should. And so to the extent that Noafi is able to invest more in the integration of these three pillars. Uh, they're really not pillars. They're really strands in the fabric of development. Uh, and we should think of them perhaps in that way. Uh, and to the extent that this initiative begins to integrate even further, uh, we'll be able to address some of the climate challenges that are going to come and already are coming in all three uh, varieties. Uh, the second thing is, uh, was mentioned earlier is that this is not unique to Egypt. All of Africa is facing uh, these challenges. And I think to the extent that Nawafi is able to inspire, to provide examples, uh, to provide insights into how other countries uh, in Africa can also address these challenges, it will be an extremely important contribution. The United States is ready to help. Uh, we indeed have been here for a long time. 
uh, USAID, for example, has invested $1.4 billion into Egyptian agriculture uh, over the years and it continues to be very active. Uh, our Development Finance Corporation, one of the largest DFIs in the world, is very active here in Egypt and very interested in the opportunities that NOAFI offers. Uh, and uh, adaptation itself has now received much more attention in the Biden administration. Uh, President Biden uh, announced in uh, the General Assembly at the UN last year, PREPARE, which is the President's Emergency Plan for Resilience and Adaptation. This plan uh, will, by 2024, be delivering about $3 billion in highly concessional capital for adaptation around the world. And we very much hope that some of that, uh, some of those resources will help support Egypt, uh, Nawafi, and others that are similarly inspired to address this real challenge of integrated uh, approaches. Uh, so with that, uh, I want to thank uh, the minister again, the two ministers for all of your work and your incredible energy and dynamism that you bring to this challenge. Uh, please keep doing it. And we will see you very soon at the COP. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Martinez, also for that inspiration and, and pushing us forward now, um, looking at uh, towards not just um, the pledges, but also on the implementation and how important it is. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to open the floor to, as, as it's getting late, I think we can only open it for maybe one or two. I'd really like to hear from the private sector. Um, is there anybody who would like to to speak one or two before we give the floor to their excellencies. Is there anybody who would like to? Okay, we have a gentleman out there if you'd like to introduce yourself, please. Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Dr. Karim Hassanin. I'm a professor of economics from Egypt, and I would like to focus on one point, that the climate change main cause was always the global warming. And the global warming main challenge was the act of the polluters. And worldwide, the participation environmental pollution is not really by the developing countries. It is mainly coming from the big industrial developed countries. And I think that COP27 could give us the opportunity to ask them to carry their responsibility toward financing the developing countries whose participation is very, very low to the problem of global warming. And we all know that, for example, that Egypt's participation to the pollution problem, the global pollution, is also very, very low. And I think that we must have a mechanism, a financial mechanism, to support the developing countries, and I say especially the African countries, and we should use this opportunity to act on this matter. That's one aspect. The other aspect is that we have to consider that we have new generations in Egypt and Africa, and these are the young people. And the young people are very promising entrepreneurs, are very promising people who make startups, and we in Egyptian universities are supporting them. A lot of them are working in projects related to sustainable development. And this should be generalized across all African countries and we should provide them a platform to integrate and cooperate also through your efforts. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Hassanin, for your contributions and your insights. Um, do we have any other contributions? Okay, so I think uh, we're getting now to the to the end, and I'd like to may first give uh, Dr. Yasmin uh, 
provide us with some additional insights and, and before we give Dr. Rania the floor. Okay, thank you, Dina. Uh, I know we've been very late, so let me thank first uh, all distinguished panelists, uh, our colleagues from uh, Ministry of Housing and, and from Sovereign Fund and Ministry of Water Resources, Dr. Iman, as well as all uh, panelists from the development partners. Let me give some reflections to the discussion that maybe would shape the way forward a little bit. First of all, the idea of the desalination water with the roadmap that the country is doing is very ambitious and we see that as really very important. But one thing maybe we would like to bring to the table which is the waste that will come out from the desalination water, which is the prime that goes back to the sea. How can we solve that problem? In fact, that's not my comment, that's more comment of the, His Excellency, the Minister of Water Resources, Dr. Henny, as we were speaking yesterday about that. And maybe this is something that we need to look at. Looking at that would bring me something very important within the component of Noafi. I know it's, very difficult to bring all projects together. And I like the very innovative idea of bringing the 4.6 and 3.4 together. But there is a great need to have that as a full-fledged program, useful to be further replicated and upscaled to the region, is to include two components, a research component and a technology transfer component. Not at the level of per project, but at the level at least for per sector, when we're talking about genetically uh, crops, genetic new crops that can sustain extreme weather events, whether it's the heat waves or the, the cold temperature of the floods. How can we enhance the research? What kind of technologies that could be affordable? If we miss those two parts, and we worked very well on the policy framework and on the capacity development and enhancing, the sustainability of the whole thing will not be there. Especially that what's very much needed at the level of the developing countries is that part related to enhancing the research and having affordable local technologies. Secondly, which is very important, we need to see that this program is done within the human basic needs, but at the end of the day, it's mitigation and adaptation and could afford to be within the loss and damage if a flood uh, would come or, or extreme heat waves. So there is a need to have a component on, on an MRV. That's part of the obligations of the country to report every two years to the convention. So part as we're getting the funds from the financial mechanisms, and that relates to my first comment, we need to ensure that the climate impact, whether within the mitigation, that's the calculation of greenhouse gases, or how, how many numbers of beneficiaries or inhabitants inhabited from the adaptation program should be always revised and included because that would be part of the reporting process for the government of Egypt. As for the part related to the regional aspect, Your Excellency, Honorable Minister, we can hear you while we've discussed yesterday. I can assure you that this is not an Egyptian cup. Maybe the sessions that we used here was related more to the Nwafi, but with all good intentions, we wanted to show that and invited ministers of environment and even fellow colleague ministers from finance for the way to show how Africa can speak up and speak with one voice and speak on implementation. Needless to mention also that part of the things that we're presenting in the upcoming uh, African ministerial meeting uh, on environment next week in the car are the number of initiatives that Egypt is putting forward on implementation for Africa. Three initiatives, and just energy transition and access to energy. The second is the FAST, which relates to agriculture and food system. And the third would include the water and the early warning system. Beside what we were finalizing, uh, the thematic days itself, where we have put adaptation at the very highest priority, 
on water, on agriculture, on biodiversity in each of the thematic days, although that's not the regular track of negotiation. The presidency program was very keen that Africa would be present very clear in a standalone session in each and every thematic day to ensure that that's an African COP. And we will speak later this week in more details during our meeting with our brothers and sister African ministers on environment. F last but not least, the idea of the early warning system for the agriculture and the food is crucial. Egypt has an excellent experience with the early warning system on anticipating the rain and the flood. It's within the Ministry of Water Resources and Irrigation. It helped us a lot, but we need to go further into that. Last but not least, in order to do that kind of research and projection, uh, we need also to link ourselves to the vulnerability assessment map that Egypt has done through the Ministry of Environment and other ministries, where we are mapping each and every single piece of our land and how that piece will be impacted by climate change within 50 to 80 years from now using the model from the IPCC. So thank you very much and I hope these reflections would be useful. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Dr. Yasmin, um, for very pertinent remarks and I think um, this is also for us as partners going forward to reflect on and to incorporate um, into the plans. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of this round table. Before I give the floor, let me first also extend my own thanks to all of you for um, those who have already uh, sort of come forward with their support and have expressed it today. But we're also looking forward to um, hearing more from you, to hearing what you can contribute to the Nexus. Um, and I can assure you that uh, there is room for everyone. So we're really looking forward to partner with all of you and to hear also not just financing, but also um, technical contributions, which are extremely important for the success of this Nexus. So with that, I would like to now invite Dr. Rania and Mashat, Minister of International Cooperation, for her concluding remarks and also to give us the roadmap towards COP27. Thank you. Thank you, Dina. Um, just a few, uh, a few comments and also on governance, because I think that was uh, one of the uh, uh, questions or, or comments that uh, was brought up. But let me just say that when we launched uh, the uh, Egypt country platform for Nuwafi, this was on July uh, 5th or July 6th, so it wasn't very uh, long ago. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, as Minister of International Cooperation, working uh, with all of you uh, to mobilize, uh, I think we exceeded our own expectations and our own energy. So we're very proud of that, and it couldn't have come together uh, without the very strong relationship that we have with you over the years. Uh, it's a credible relationship. You've seen a government that has put forward uh, plans, uh, uh, designed projects, implemented them. So the appetite uh, is there. Uh, and also uh, everything that we put together has uh, global goals at, uh, th at the, uh, you know, in the heart of it. In terms of governance, and this is very, very important, uh, there is uh, full political support and commitment uh, to see Nuwafi through. So this is very, very important. We heard it from the president uh, of Egypt, uh, uh, His Excellency Abdel Fattah Sisi in the opening. Uh, this gives us uh, a lot of uh, 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 impetus and, and a push forward. The second, uh, the prime minister uh, uh, being uh, at the head of the executive uh, uh, body has also uh, coordinated uh, the effort and he has established uh, a, a national committee on Nuwafi. Uh, this committee includes all the ministries uh, that uh, are involved in the nexus of water, food, and energy. So one of the comments, uh, making sure that there's a united front in order to see this through. This has happened through the establishment of this national committee. Ministry of International Cooperation uh, leads the committee in the sense of coordinating so that we have one interface in case any 
uh, of the uh, partners, uh, big development partners or private sector uh, or, or anyone who has uh, an innovative uh, finance idea or technical assistance, if there are any questions, if there are any recommendations, there's one door to go through. Uh, questions will be replied to uh, through this coordination and governance mechanism. So this is also uh, uh, in terms of how the government is uh, trying to see the execution going forward. We will be uh, doing that part uh, on our side. So these are um, um, uh, just a few uh, of the points uh, to be uh, um, uh, taken into account. In the spirit of UN language, uh, leaving no one behind, we don't want to leave any institution behind. <laughs> we want to see all financial institutions and all uh, those who care about climate, about development, teaming with us. There are so many ways to uh, team uh, and uh, coordinate with the different agencies. There's agriculture, there's food, there's technology, there's startups, there's gender, uh, uh, there's a geographical uh, location, there's uh, early warning systems. So anyone who wants to really contribute to the climate agenda and contribute to the development agenda, there is space. So please, uh, th there's a spirit of leaving no one behind. And finally, I want to commend uh, all the institutions uh, that are working with us on NOAFI uh, and those who actually uh, uh, were part of the joint statement that we issued uh, on the first day of the ICF uh, in this uh, statement, joint statement that has been published and they are the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development, Africa 50, the African Development Bank, Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank, Arab Fund for Economic and Social Development, Citibank, European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, European Investment Bank, the Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero, GFANS, HSBC, uh, Industrial Renewable Energy Agency, IRENA, International Fund for Agriculture and Development, Islamic Development Bank, Japan International Cooperation Agency, Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development, OPEC Fund, United Nations, and the United States of America. Everybody has been extremely supportive. The joint statement is available, and in it, uh, there are a few points. Uh, everybody is um, applauding Egypt's efforts in inaugurating the country platform, Nuefi, acknowledging that it offers a unique opportunity for the international community to show solid support to the climate agenda, reaffirming commitment to scaling up partnerships, underscoring the importance of continuing to improve access to climate finance, stressing the indispensable role of the private sector, reinforcing cooperation towards a green transition based on shared ambition to instigate low emissions, climate neutral and climate resilient future, reaffirm support to scale financing and investment to adaptation projects, underscoring the importance of strengthening national capacities to enhance institutional and technical skills. Uh, and again, uh, I want to thank Dina. She rediscovered herself as a moderator today. And this is what NUEFI provides. You can actually uh, maximize and discover new skills and new, uh, 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 new passions in you. And at the end uh, of this round table, I would just, again, like all of us to remember that let's know FE together from pledges to implementation. Thank you very much.